This is a podcast from the Fitzwilliam Museum, Cambridge. What I try to paint is that moment of the way the zip crashes on the land. I mean, it's got a whole lot going for it. In come the waves, different every day, different every minute, sometimes roaring like a wild beast, sometimes laughing gently or more loudly. Corbet said the wonderful thing that he tried to paint the sound of the deer as it came through the forest. Well, in the same way, I'm trying to paint the sound of the sea, which of course is impossible, but I mean, there's no point in doing anything that's possible. I have an exhibition just about to open at the Fitzwilliam in Cambridge called Maggie Hambling the Wave, and that is the subject of all the work here. There's a sort of introductory bit showing my works with the sea uh, from other years, previous years, but the big room is full of the big new paintings and some new paintings that have not been seen before. I know that when there was a, a, I had a big sea show up north last year, one of the attendants begged not to be in a particular room because she <laughs> said it was making her feel increasingly seasick. But that pleased me a lot because there is, a, I mean, people have said to me there's this feeling of uh, being in the sea with these paintings. So early, very early each morning, well, pretty early, by about um, half past four, five in the summer, six, half past in the winter, I drive to the sea, very close to me, where I am in Suffolk, and I draw the sea in a sketchbook. This is like a like a pianist uh, doing the scales each day or a dancer practicing steps, just to get into that rhythm again every day of my subject. And I get back to the studio and I try to make the waves crash again in the oil paint on the canvas or in the sculpture, because I've been recently making sculpture of waves, which are going to be shown in London next month. It's, it's all the same thing, this trying to find the particular curve of a particular wave. Each one is a portrait of a particular wave. Uh, it has got me by the short and girlies, this subject. And, of course, as I approach early middle age, I equate the sea with time, which will take and is taking, inevitably making erosion. I mean, not only on what I regard as my bit of coast in Suffolk, but uh, on me too. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, so I'm the shifting shingle, and I wrote a love poem to the sea uh, with images, which uh, is a little book that is here at the Fitzwilliam called You Are the Sea, and it's about the engulfing nature, not only of love, but of the sea. I mean, I, and many things you realise sort of afterwards. I now remember walking a little way into the sea when I was a child, I mean, a toddler, but I mean, by myself, but it was a very polite bit of sea because my mother always took me to Frinton, very unlike the wild bit of sea I look at now. And I can remember walking into the sea and talking to it, 10 to the dozen, talking, 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 talking to the sea as if it was a friend. But as I get older, I try to listen to it and I try to paint the sound of it. And I realize again now, afterwards, after the event of Scallop, my sculpture on Albra Beach, that not everybody is particularly in love with, but a lot of people are, that the beginnings of that was seeing, at the age of seven, the, the, the coronation, the fireworks at Albra. I mean, it was very, very exciting uh, sort of moment. I mean, the fireworks exploding uh, with, the, with the night sky and the night sea. For a child of seven, it was an incredibly exciting thing. And I, when I made the scallop, I tried to bring some of the excitement I feel about Benjamin Britten's music into the structure, particularly the structure of it, that uh, faces the sea. And I think everybody has this conversation with the sea. The scallop actually seems to be so covered with people, it'd be very difficult to have a conversation with your husband, let alone <laughs> with the sea. But if you happen upon that sculpture when you're by yourself, um, I wanted it to be a sort of place of peace that you could contemplate the horizon and I chose the phrase from Peter Grimes, I hear those voices that will not be drowned because I think we all have voices inside us. We probably don't listen to them often enough. So I thought it had universal uh, sort of application. And I think people do talk to the sea. I mean, it's not for nothing. We're an, we're an island race and uh, there's so many references in Shakespeare to the sea. And, of course, we had great people like Nelson, although of course he came from Norfolk, so he doesn't count. But there's also the grandeur and the power of the thing, you know, and it really is very humbling, and one does feel smaller than ever 
if you have a bit of sea to yourself and the, the vastness of it and how insignificant we all are without getting too religious about it. I tend to go early in the morning because it's always the mo- moment of optimism. I mean, all the, with the sunrise and the build-up towards the sunrise is very exciting. And, of course, there's the whole sexy thing about the sea, you know, as a wave gradually fumbles about and approaches you and then it becomes solid before it crashes uh, like a climax and dissolves. It's death, it's life, it's sex, it's got everything that you could possibly want in a subject. And these sea paintings began on November the 30th, 2002, in between um, making the maquette, the model for the sculpture scallop, and it's beginning to be made in reality. And it was th- during that winter that I drove to the sea early in the morning on this particular Sunday, the 30th of November, and there was a huge storm crashing and bashing about. And I went back to the studio, and I was actually painting a memory portrait of a, of a beggar I'd seen in London. And I looked out of the window about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and I thought, what the hell are you doing painting from memory this London beggar when what's inside you is the whole excitement of that sea this morning? So that's when they began. And then little paint- the first little paintings were the Albra Festival exhibition in 2003, and they've gone on, but <laughs> if you come to the Fitzwilliam, you'll see that they've got considerably larger, although there are some tiny ones too, working up to some of the biggest ones, uh, well, the, the biggest ones I've painted yet. But, uh, of course, in the studio, these eight feet by five paintings seemed enormously large and, or, you know, to move about. In the uh, very beautiful gallery here, they look uh, smaller, but I hope it's going to make people <laughs> feel seasick, or at least feel they're at the sea and that the waves are crashing in front of them, because it's that movement, that energy, that split second, like falling in love with somebody, that I'm trying to convey. <laughs> 